next talk is actually from our, my co-chair, and uh, that's uh, Professor Louise Emmett. But uh, the talk is going to be on um, PSMA PET CT, how do we interpret changes in uptake intensity following ADT. But before we do do that, um, I just want to acknowledge that Professor Emmett has actually received one of the highest awards uh, from the EAU, which is uh, the paper, um, the best paper from 2021, as mentioned by Daniel just earlier on, for the primary study. And uh, this is a you know, amazing effort because this is an impact factor greater than 20 journal. It's it's the peak uh, surgical journal and the highest multidisciplinary urological journal around. So, just a round of applause for, for Louise on the way through. Thanks. It was actually much easier than um, being the chair. Um, <laughs> So I get to talk on a really interesting subject today um, and, and thanks very much for asking me to talk um, um, at this prostate preceptorship, how we interpret changes in PSMA in the presence of ADT. Um, and in fact, that, they're my disclosures. And in fact, this has become more important. We've moved from a staging and biochemical recurrence with PSMA PET into the metastatic hormone sensitive and the ca metastatic castrate resistant setting. And this impacts just about every report that we do. So, in fact, there's a very strong relationship between the androgen receptor and the PSMA receptor in the prostate cancer cell. The FOLH1 gene actually encodes the PSMA protein, and that gets suppressed by testosterone or androgens and gets upregulated when you have androgen blockade. And we know that from this very lovely report that was done in 2016, this review. There's been some really great cell line and mouse work that have, um, have shown this very clearly. And this study from 2016, uh, what they did was they engineered castrate-sensitive cell lines, castrate-resistant cell lines, and then they incubated them with abiraterone. And what you can see is this progressive increase in PSMA intensity as you go along that pathway. So much higher uh, PSMA density in, in cells that are castrate-resistant with abiraterone. This I really loved because it shows how manipulable the pro the, the um, uh, the PSMA receptor actually is to the androgen receptor. These cells are castrate resistant cells um, and they were incubated with enzalutamide for three weeks and then they washed out the enzalutamide and they continued to measure the density of the PSMA. And you can see it goes, the density goes up with the enzalutamide and then comes straight back down again when you take the enzalutamide away. So that means we have a manipulable receptor and that's quite exciting when you think about what it might do for sensitivity or for PSMA targeted therapy. It's, you know, case reports I'm not very keen on, but sometimes you get a case report that really changes the way you think. And this case report from Tom Hope really did that for me. It's this fascinating case of this patient who had Gleason score 10 disease. They did a baseline PSMA PET, um, and then the patient was on ADT and bicalutamide. They did a day 28 PSMA PET. And what you can see between the two PETs is this dramatic increase in PSMA intensity at day 28, just on uh, bicalunamide and ADT, despite the fact that the PSA had reduced very dramatically, so the patient had had a, treat, a PSA response. And, you know, it's very exciting. You think, wow, you're going to have a high-grade cancer going for definitive therapy. You can put them on two weeks of ADT and be able to see so much more metastatic disease. So that really inspired me to do a study at St Vincent's with our team where we took 15 men half of them metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer, half of them metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer, and we did serial time-point PSMA PET on them. So we did baseline prior to starting treatment, day 9, day 18, and day 28. We also did uh, testosterone and PSA at each, each time point and quantitative analysis of these images because I thought it would change the way we imaged men at diagnosis. But in the hormone-sensitive setting, it was fascinating. We, we didn't get what I was expecting to see. Uh, we actually got a down-regulation of the receptor. So patients who had metastatic disease um, at diagnosis, you can actually see here they had a metastatic uh, focus in bone. By day nine, that had largely turned off. And that was reproduced across multiple patients. Just about every single patient had down-regulation of the receptor by day nine. It was a bit heterogeneous. Uh, this is one patient who turned up with extensive met metastatic bone disease, very symptomatic. PSA was 185 with an SUMAX of uh, 45. Uh, by day nine, that had downregulated. So an SUMAX was down to 20. The volume of the disease was lower. Pain had gone. PSA was 90. But by day 28, P SUMAX had gone up again, had gone up to 62. You can see there's a lower volume of disease, but what's there is much more intense. PSA right down to 11, and this patient actually went on to um, uh, docetaxel chemotherapy. 
Um, what happens in the in the metastatic hormone sensitive space has been bolstered a little bit because it's really there's some data, but there's not a large amount of data. But this is in uh, 30 patients that was done published this month. Um, patients with newly diagnosed high grade prostate cancer, metastatic hormone sensitive, going on ADT. They did a baseline and a week uh, 10 to 14 PSMA PET scan. They looked at quantitative analysis and they found that all PSMA PET indices significantly reduced to a very significant level. There was partial response in 80 percent of these patients metabolically, and only two patients actually had progressive disease. Um, in those patients who had very aggressive ISIP grade group 5 disease, they actually showed that the reduction in the intensity of PSMA PET was lower. Um, so interesting, similar to our metastatic hormone sensitive findings, what we don't have yet is any information on what happens with the PSMA PET uh, intensity uh, in patients who have metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer who are put on the combination of both ADT and ASI, abiraterone, enzalutamide, darolutamide, apalutamide, in the metastatic hormone-sensitive space. We really need that if we're going to consider moving lutetian PSMA or PSMA-targeted therapies, therapies earlier. In the castrate-resistant cohort in our study, we actually found uh, completely different to the metastatic hormone-sensitive space. We got this upregulation in all men, uh, and this particular patient is in orange here, it, right in the middle, and you can see they've had metastatic disease uh, prior to starting on enzalutamide, so this is the baseline on the day nine scan. We've got a lot more uh, disease that you can see. PSA hasn't changed. So that's what I would call a significant upregulation. We had some patients who upregulated very dramatically that you can see here. One of these patients actually uh, went on to the therapy trial subsequently and was one of seven patients who had an exceptional response on the therapy trial. So how do you put all of this together? For me, the way I think about it is um, we get downregulation in well-behaved disease in the metastatic hormone-sensitive space. We get upregulation automatically in the metastatic castrate-resistant space. Some high-grade patients upregulate in the metastatic hormone-sensitive space. So I see PSMA upregulation as identifying phenotypes of androgen resistance. And if we think about it in that way, it helps us decide how we use these two very effective treatments in combination. Um, and in fact, it actually fits when you think about what the uh, PSMA receptor does in the cell. It's actually a proliferative agent. It activates the PI3K, AKT, mTOR pathway via glutamate cleavage. So it... The, I see it as an alternative growth pathway to, P, uh, to the androgen receptor. Um, and it, it probably, because of this, has good prognostic and predictive values. This is a very nice study that was undertaken in the States in 16 patients. They did serial PSMA PET in men commencing either abiraterone or enzalutamide in the metastatic castrate-resistant setting. They measured the upregulation, so they quantified and measured upregulation, so change in SCV max and change in volume, and correlated that to time to change in therapy and overall survival. What they found was if you upregulated your PSMA receptor early in treatment, then you had a shorter time to change in therapy and you had a shorter overall survival compared to patients who had serial PET but either had stable SUV max or stable intensity changes on the PSMA PET or who had a down regulation. So they concluded that PSMA PET upregulation early in treatment with ASI actually correlates with survival uh, and is a prognostic indicator. There's a potential for the combination also uh, to be used to make patients who are not eligible uh, for uh, PSMA-targeted therapy eligible by upregulating the receptor. And this is a cell line and case study that was done, which took a patient who had very low PSMA expression. They put them on enzalutamide for a couple of weeks, got increased uptake, treated them with lutetian PSMA, uh, and actually got a good treatment response. Obviously, we need a lot of prospective trials to see if that is actually valuable. Even in men with high expression disease who are at end stage, uh, this is a possibility. This is a patient of ours, a 48-year-old patient who'd failed all treatments, was entering marrow failure. These are the SPECT quantitative images that we've done here. We gave a high dose of lutetian PSMA and um, channeling Scott Tagawa, we fractionated this. Uh, so two weeks later, uh, we gave another dose of lutetian PSMA and got good disease control. But the other thing we did, um, and you can see it on the quantitation, this patient had an SVMAX of 59 for the first dose. We put them on abiraterone between the two. SVMAX went up to 161. This patient did get good disease control. Whether or in fact that helped them or not, we don't know. But it's certainly very, very interesting and we need to look at that better. 
One of the ways we're going to look at that better is by doing prospective randomised trials, and the NTP trial is a prospective randomised phase two trial where we're looking at enzalutamide versus enzalutamide plus either two or four doses of lutetium PSMA in men with metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer with risk factors for early treatment failure on enzalutamide alone. I'm not going to talk about the therapy components of that study. Um, what I am going to say is that we're looking very closely at prognostic and predictive biomarkers. Can we predict which patients are going to need multiple treatments? Can we predict which patients are going to fail early on enzalutamide? And to do that, we're doing serial PSMA PETs in these 160 patients, both on enzalutamide and on the combination of enzalutamide plus lutetium PSMA. We're doing day 15, we're doing day 92, and pe progression PSMA PETs uh, to see whether we we can actually develop predictive nomograms. We're also do, doing circulating tumour cells and cell-free DNA, so we can come up with composite predictive nomograms to try and help decide how we should be treating these patients. This is the quantitative analysis that we're undertaking in that study, and just a couple of cases. This is a patient um, enrolled, PSA 382, with extensive metastatic and lymph nodal involvement. Day 15 on enzalutamide, we've had upregulation of the PSMA receptor, at a number of sites, we've got a number of new sites. PSA has dropped on enzalutamide. This patient got randomised to the enzalutamide alone arm. So by day 92, PSA had risen. They had multiple new sites of disease. Um, patient was taken off trial for progression. They had two doses of lutetium PSMA clinically for compassionate purposes. Patient um, PSA dropped to 0.3 and 12 months later is still um, completely controlled. Another patient on the trial had a PSA of 140 with extensive metastatic bone disease. The day 15 scan also showed upregulation with a PSA having dropped to 98, but the intensity getting brighter. This patient was randomised to the lutetium PSMA arm. After two doses of lutetium PSMA, the PSA is undetectable. There's nothing on the PSA scan. That's actually now 20 months ago. The PSA remains undetectable with a negative scan. They only got two doses of lutetium PSMA. So in summary, there's a very strong connection between the androgen and the PSMA receptors. We get heterogeneity a lot at both the patient and the lesional level that's likely related to the androgen resistant of the clone. Um, in hormone-sensitive prostate cancer, the ADT will actually reduce sensitivity as, as soon as nine days after commencing, so we have to be very careful when we're staging patients if we've already commenced ADT. We do get upregulation in a small percentage of patients with metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer, and we need more studies to evaluate how often that occurs with ASI. And the castrate resistant space, upregulation is common, and it could have good theranostic value, uh, and we need to validate prognostic and predictive biomarker capabilities in this space. Thank you very much.